Yes, sir. Did, who, someone just raised their hand. Oh. Um, like, you know, when you go in Planet Hollywood and you see all those, like, props and all those decorations? No, but go ahead. Um, oh, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Don't, uh, wouldn't you be able to sell all those things for a lot more? Like, make more money uh, mm -hmm. for, like, yeah. for the budget? I'm sure you could. So that could increase the. Uh, right, but, but I, I don't want to be in that business. I'm not talking about, like, like selling uh, celebrity things. I'm just saying, like, for, for the whole entire budget, if, like, you went over or under, maybe that might be able to help. But I, there's no time, there's no people to do it. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just move on. Okay, but here's something that also that I thought you again I thought you were going to ask, which is what happens to the money that you that you recoup. That's where I thought you were going to go to. What what's the answer to that? So I'm, I got this money, right? It just goes back into a general fund that the auditor you know, distributes wherever she needs it. And you, if, if, she, if we sell three thousand dollars worth of wardrobe, and wardrobe needs the three thousand, she'll put it in wardrobe first. And then if that's not needed, then she'll go to wherever it is needed. But you can pick up some, some significant coin in reselling. Think about it, 50% if you're lucky. So right. then that, that brings me to the question. You said a lot of this stuff is rental. But yeah, you're not selling that, obviously. Right. So it's only what, is it, what, what is it that you like, purchase? Yeah. Uh, what, what you purchase, what you're going to, if, if, if if you're going to spend 80% of the purchase, for instance, or, or even 60% of the purchase, you're better off purchasing it if it's something you can easily resell. Okay. But if it's real exotic, like the articulated buffalo that I bought, right, for the kill shot, which we haven't gotten to yet, that's real hard to sell. So we, we, we read the, you read the screenplay, it's the first time, and you see that a buffalo gets shot. How are they gonna do that? You know, are you gonna dart them? You know? Um, and then you got ASPCA all over your case, and whatever, and, it, and, the, and they miss, or we see the dart, you know, and whatever, you know, it's not the way to go, okay. So um, where I went was animatronics. So, but I'm in Calgary, and also I can't afford Hollywood animatronics. That's way too expensive. So I, uh, I budget $10,000, I'm pretty sure it was 10, we'll see when I do the budget. Uh, $10,000 for an articulated buffalo. And I use a guy out of Calgary. And the production designer is the, is the person who's responsible for finding that guy and doing the homework for, for us to make sure he's a good guy and he's got a track record for doing this. He, he checks out. So we pay him the 10 grand and he, he delivers the articulated buffalo. He delivered it, uh, it, was, it was somewhere around here, three, two, I remember that we were in the production office and we went down to the parking lot outside the production office in prep to take a look at it, okay? And he had it all set up on, on the parking lot. It's a full-size buffalo made of, you know, um, steel, I guess, you know, steel plate. And he's got one of those remotes, just like the, the kid, the, what kids use when they want to, you know, move car, toy cars around. And with the antenna out, and, and the special effects men is with him, and whatever, and they're all, you know, and the production designer and whatever. I'm not sure why they were looking happy because, for, because of what happened, but anyway, uh, now that I think back on it, the exec producer, myself, and, and, uh, and Tom Selleck, who is the exec producer as well, we go down and take a look. You know, this is great, it's there, we'll see it long before we get it out there on the day, right? We're standing around and the guy says, yeah, I'm ready, uh, ready, says, it's great, everybody ready? Okay, go, you know, I said, roll, okay? So he, he hits the button, right? Now picture, I can't do it physically, but I'm not gonna bend over on all fours, but you're down here, this is the buffalo, right? And it's facing this way. And it looks like, like a buffalo, it's to scale and all that. And you hear that winding, cranking sound of, co of wheel cogs coming together. You hear that and I'll just try and duplicate that. This is what it does. I'll do it this way, see? right? So it goes, it's like this, and it goes, and picture the sound, it goes, and then it rocks till it comes to a stand. And everybody's silent, which is usually the time when I like to talk. That's it. 
uh, yeah, that, that's it. $10,000, that's, that's a $10,000 kill shot? Well, yeah. Oh my God. And then everybody feels it's safe to start laughing. They wait for Seleucus to laugh first, and then everybody laughs. Okay, it's like, like the, the, the emperor from Rome. <laughs> right? Not, that's nothing to say about Tom, it's just that's what people do when you're around people bigger than life, right? And it becomes, you know, and it becomes this, you know, and so he says, would you like to see it again? I said, and A, I want to see it again. For 10 grand, I want two takes. So he straightens it up. That takes a half an hour, right? And then I said, and before he rolls, I said, I said, now I want the second, I want the second version to include where that, that metal turd that falls out just before he, fall, before he, he articulates and falls down. You know, of course, there is no such thing, but that gets a laugh. And because uh, I want to hear it hit the pavement and clang, you know? So he does it again, and it's the same damn thing. You know, it just gets, and the laughter gets bigger. Okay, so now I got an articulated buffalo, $10,000, what am I gonna do with it, right? What are you gonna do? You're not gonna use it, you're gonna sell it. So I start the, the process of being for sale before we even start the movie, right? No takers. At what price? 5,000, right? Nothing, okay, then 4,500. It comes down, it, I wind up selling it after we wrap to, I think, it was a rancher, right, for $500. Jesus. Okay, five big ones, right? And then I get a call about, oh, it must be six years later. That happens in your life. You get these calls, you know, from something that you did, you know. Usually they're funny calls, right? Turns out this rancher has already started a tradition. He lives in Longview, which is about an hour, two hours south of Calgary on, you know, 15,000 acres and whatever. And he has a tradition now that uh, it's, it's lawn sculpture is what it is, right? And it faces the freeway, so you drive by it and you see it. And it actually, it, it's totally real looking, right? And once a year on Halloween, he lights it up, right? <laughs> And, it, and he hits the button, <laughs> it does. And it's become a tradition for, the, for those, the town of 600 people. And they all converge on his property and, and <laughs> do that. It's very funny, okay? 500, 10,000. Not my finest hour, as Barry Corbin says in, in Sheriff, when he plays Sheriff Moncrief. Not my finest hour. Shit happens. Okay, any questions on the prep? The animatronic guy? Sorry? Did, did you have some fun words with the animatronic guy? Um, I never have, I never do that. I'm always polite, respectful. <laughs> yeah. I, I did, oh yeah, actually I did. I said, why aren't you buying it for five grand? He goes, I don't want that piece of shit, man. <laughs> Are you kidding? So anyway, um, and, and that often happens, by the way. You should know this. It's, it's a, sort of like not, not so un uncommon. For those very sophisticated things like, like what um, LTM does, you know, industrial light magic, you know, those kinds of things, when you go to these small, not, the non-film capitals of the world, you're going to get the, the cheap, you're going to get the $10,000 version. I, I honestly don't know what it would, but it would, I don't know what it would cost to do it. Maybe it's I don't know if it's 50 grand to get it done in LA, you know, to be really believable. Uh, I don't know, but also we could have done some things, you know, in we could have done some things CGI, but that had been more than 10 grand. You know, CGI is wonderful, but you better have the money to pay for it. It is not cheap, and we'll see in the we'll see the CGI that we did in, in uh, Brush with Fate in our film clips a little bit later today. Okay. Yes, sir. Where does, where does all the, the cost in CGI go to? Is it just it's in post. It's in. Oh no! It's uh, it, it, it probably that's a that's a lower end of the of the ch the chunk is the technology, you know, and renting it. Right. So, but I mean, does it cost them that much to make this technology, or is it just the people owning it and they're like? I, what, one of the it's what maybe it's the worst business to be in. Any of you guys thinking about doing it? Don't go in it, okay? Because it's. Because you have to, your pockets have to be so deep, because it costs so much for the technology, and it's at a date in three and a half months. 
you know. And the, the guys like me are going to go to the house that's got the latest because it can do more. So it is not a good business, in my opinion, to be in. Okay. What about the CGI and Crossfire Trail with the ship? Yes, yeah, oh yeah, that was very, you'll, you'll see it in the budget. Uh, it, that was very inexpensive. And th that's why Roy Smith is just absolutely brilliant. You know, you know I, I didn't say do it for a certain number. I said, what could you do it for? And he, and he said, I can do it for this. And I have to do the drawings. And I said, you can do that. And, it, and, I, and I trust Roy. It'll, it won't look. And he said, no, not. And he's someone who, 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 um, who totally understands what the eye will forgive. Okay, and you only see it once, in the audience, and and he also understands what sounds going to do to help, and it works. I mean, if you didn't know it, you would you. I don't think you would have thought about it being CGI. The educated eye would know, but there, that's you know, two thousand people in America. Out of those millions of people that are going to watch it, two thousand have an eye that can pick it up. If you look at Save a River, though, there is a shot. That it's the shot. It, we had a dry riverbed, and we CGI'd water into it. And it's a very wide shot, and it still looks like shit. Okay. Was, because we didn't, put, we didn't hire the right people and or pay the right price to get it. And also, it was 1996 technology.